Whenever I was growing up, it was all the, the feature length films or the, the popular short films, but it's interesting to get into these short films, like the really, really early stuff like this one here from 1927, and it's just you know, a testament to early filmmaking. Hey guys, welcome along to another Laurel and Hardy movie review and this one is with, with Love and Hisses from 1927. Now essentially it's Laurel and Hardy are off to war and it's, it's on the DVD in the box set where you know you've got a feature length film and then you've got related shorts so this one here ties into blockheads as in you know what they're away to war you know so uh in the short, it's like Laurel and Hardy don't know each other in this one, and Ollie is a commanding officer over Stanley, but over Oliver, there's James Finlayson. <laughs> and uh, starts off with they're going to the train, and you know, Oliver's always trying to roll a cigarette, and something keeps happening. Stanley keeps knocking the tobacco out of his hand, and Oliver's like report to me in the morning and you know <laughs> then of course Finlayson gets involved in the whole situation when Stanley points out two girls that are waving at the train Oliver goes over to try and chat them up and it turns out it's a girlfriend of James Finlayson and of course Finlayson's to Ollie report to me in the morning so at this point Stanley's got onto the train there's nowhere for him to bunk in you know there's soldiers everywhere but there's a private cabin off to the side that he finds and he goes in there and he gets you know set up and you know chilled out eating a box of chocolates and he's waving out the window at Ollie and Ollie's raging to see him in this uh, little room on his own where he shouldn't be so he goes in trails him out of it and you know, once that's happened Oliver decides well, stuff it I'm going to take it for myself but the Again, James Finlayson comes in at it's his cabin and he says to Ollie, report to me in the morning. <laughs> so that's twice Oliver's gotten into trouble over Stanley already. Um, Stanley ends up sitting with a soldier that's eating this, all the food is stinking garlic. Stanley's stomach is churning, he opens the window of the train to trying to get rid of the smell but this soldier is offering food to Stanley that Stanley doesn't want but he's too polite to say no and you know he takes a sandwich off him or this bit of cake or something and he's pretending to eat it when the guy's not looking he launches it out the window but down the carriage a little bit again James Finlayson is in his cabin he's got his window open and Stanley chucks the pie out the one window comes in the other window and hits Finlayson in the face um, yeah, so it's. I was never, uh, never seen many of the silent shorts before. Like whenever I was growing up, it was all the, the feature length films or the, the popular short films. But it's interesting to get into these short films, like the really early early stuff, like this one here from 1927, and it's just, you know, a testament to early filmmaking, and how good a story can be told without any dialogue you know there's you know obviously you think of a silent film there's going to be sections of the film there's going to be like dialogue on the screen to keep you along with the storyline but in this one here it happens once in a while but not too often you can you can keep up with exactly what's going on without any of that there and that's just beautiful beautiful film making anyway we get to the next morning and there's the the parade all the soldiers is lined up and Finlayson's doing his inspection. Stanley turns up late and can't get anything right, can't keep in line. Uh, driving Finlayson mad and yeah, that's just that's just typical Laurel and Hardy fair. Uh, you know, Stanley is doing his best to do everything right. But once he does start getting it right, he's still slightly getting it wrong. So there's just that section where 
you know, Van Lysen is ready to kill him, but at the same time he's kind of doing it all right to a certain extent. But he can't get the gun loaded. Van Lysen tries to fix it and uh, gets the soldiers all to turn around because he's messing it up. And at one point he lifts the, the rifle up and he looks down the barrel of it and like gunpowder goes out over his face. Uh, the humour in these films, I mean, it's just... There's stuff in there for everyone. It's, it sets it up for adult entertainment as well as childish entertainment as well. It's brilliant. Uh, Funnison sends out the, the whole platoon on the platoon, the, the section that, that Stanley's in. Funnison sends them out on manoeuvres under the command of Oliver because of Stanley screwing up everything. Uh, In this film, there's parts where I mentioned the, the stinking food earlier on, and there's there's early graphics of like uh, the stinking food instead of them actually using dialogue on the screen, they use like early graphics to do like you know like smells coming from the food. And yes, again, just seeing stuff from a, an amateur filmmaker's perspective, seeing the stuff that was done early in the process is very interesting to me. But anyway, we're out in manoeuvres with them, and uh, everybody is just, you know, raging that they have to do this all over the head of Stanley. And they find this pond, and they decide they're going to go for a swim, skinny dipping. And Oliver's sending the, the troops in, and he's getting ready in too, but he, to annoy Stanley, he's like, you guard the uniforms. Everybody's just threw their uniforms onto uh a, a pile and <laughs> Stanley has a cigarette at this stage and he's he's having a smoke while he's watching and he chucks it away and accidentally sets the uniforms on fire so <laughs> uh, back at the camp the top brass have landed to check out the troops and Finlayson is you know like, like check this here out you know how good a commanding officer am I uh, the soldiers return in their underwear <laughs> and at one point during the return journey there's these girls walking down the, the road and the soldiers have to hide behind this sign that they go past and they get uh, attacked by a by a, a load of bees like there's a beehive in there somebody stumbles upon it and of course the bees come out and the soldiers all run off into the camp and then everyone Commands the soldiers and the whole works, you know, that Finlayson is trying, Finlayson is trying so hard to make it look like this is a good camp and all these soldiers rush in with all these bees and whatnot. And then, of course, the next morning, they do the closing shot of the film where they're, they've got the rifles over their shoulders and they're taking their orders to, uh, you know, turn left and march. And as they turn around, you can see the their backsides all swollen up because of the bee stings that they received. So uh, that's, that's a good little film. Now, I, I did enjoy it, as I say. It's uh, just from a, an amateur filmmaker's perspective, going back and seeing all this old stuff, and you can see a lot of the origins of a lot of things that have lasted right up until now, and like that effect with like the stinking steam kind of effect coming off the the uh the stinking food you know it's it's an early version of the same technology that was used for the lightsabers in star wars mm -hmm.